Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer here at Infoblox. Today, I'm here to go over Infoblox's new Blocks One Threat Defense and explain to you in detail what it is. For the agenda, I'm going to start with talking about some reasons why Blocks One Threat Defense exists and what it can do to help you, along with information that can be helpful for you understanding why Blocks One Threat Defense is so valuable. Then, I'll get into the different parts of Blocks One Threat Defense and how we're different from our competitors today such as Threat Intelligence, Data Exchange, Infoblox Ecosystem, Threat Insight, and the Hybrid Approach. Then I'll take a minute to explain the deployment options that you get. Hopefully I won't be spending too much time on the slides, as finally I'll be taking you on a grand tour of the Blocks One Threat Defense and everything that is involved. So first, the general information. I'm not the first person you heard it from, and nor will I be the last. Cybercrime is a growing market, and it's starting to get out of hand. And although money is lost, Money is not the only thing lost in these breaches, but trust as well. And breaches can result in residual financial losses way down the road. So why is this, you might ask? It's simple. Your data is valuable. Hackers want this information to sell, and they can do this easily, as there are direct correlations between the information that they get and the payment they receive. Of course, data isn't everything they're going for, as DNS is the number one route for attack. This sheet gives you a good idea of the impact that you and your organization are facing today. DNS, way back when, was just made to work. The founders didn't give a care in the world about security. But today, you are the ones suffering from it and need a way to fix it. So, in order to fix it, you need to know what the process of malware is. And that's as simple as Pi. They're penetrating into your networks, infecting your hosts, and exfiltrating the data. By the way, they can do all of this through the DNS. Now what might this lead to, you ask? Extremely overworked SecOp teams. Of all the events that are triggered, only around 4% are actually investigated. Not only that, but 92% of businesses get 500 plus alerts per day. So at best, you're looking at around 480 uninvestigated alerts per day. And not only that, but the number of security tools used to investigate and remediate the issues can get out of hand. Now I'll explain how Blocks One Threat Defense can help with all of this in a minute. Blocks One Threat Defense gives organizations better availability, enhanced protection, and containment. Now that you have some good facts on your plate, let's get to business. What is Blocks One Threat Defense? To keep it overly simplified, for someone who's never heard of it before, Blocks One Threat Defense is a DNS firewall with reputational signature and behavioral protection. Now remember that that is an overly simplified explanation, as Blocks One Threat Defense does so much more than just that. Blocks One Threat Defense, which can be deployed in any format, is a DNS firewall that also gives you the ability to investigate, remediate, integrate, and resolve all your DNS threats from one place. Most people looking at Infoblox know about the DDI product that Infoblox provides, which is DNS, DHCP, and IPAM. Being the leaders in the DDI market, we have an extensive ability to provide you security onto the DNS level and working seamlessly with many different security vendors to help remediate your issues. Regardless, if you want to use public cloud such as AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, or private cloud infrastructure such as VMware, OpenStack, or many others, Envelox can already work with you to make your organization have the protection and reliability needed to keep your network running and safe. Now let's talk about Infoblox's Threat Intelligence Data Exchange. Infoblox's Threat Intelligence Data Exchange, or TIDE for short, is Infoblox's ability to share threat intel between government agencies, marketplace vendors, and open source materials with Infoblox customers, and at the same time, giving you the ability to share your data across multiple platforms. Infoblox ensures that TIDE data is of high quality, which can be explained in Infoblox's acronym TRACE. T is for timely, which means that all data that you will be receiving will be up to date and current while being delivered without delay. R is for reliable, as Infoblox team here at Infoblox curates the data and makes sure that all the data can be trusted. A is for accuracy, as Infoblox has less than a 0.01% historical false positive rate. That's not 1% or 0.1%, but 0.01%. C is for contextual, as all data will be related to threat-related indicators. E is for easy, as Infoblox uses all types of formats so that you and your third-party vendors and appliances can use the data. For your note, the reason that threat intel is so valuable 
is that many people find it that their threat intelligence isn't up to snuff with the current market of malicious agents trying to steal their data. Once you get all this threat intelligence, the next question is how do you find what you're looking for? With Infoblox's dossier, you'll be able to dig into newly acquired data and see exactly what's going inside your network. Dossier uses many different partner tools and are standardized for threat hunting all in one place, giving you speed and efficiency. And again, Dossier can be used by third-party vendors such as Sims to give you more context on events that are being triggered on your environment. Now let's talk briefly about Infoblox's ecosystem, as this gives you a huge amount of value to the other security devices you're already using. Infoblox's ecosystem is an appliance that sits on your local network that pulls events from Blocks 1 Threat Defense, and depending on the workflow, will perform different actions on third-party platforms. In essence, it's a quick way to automate work and quickly remediate security risks. Envelblox's ecosystem can be used to push events to third-party platforms. This includes SOARs, and even without a SOAR, Envelblox's ecosystem can orchestrate, automate, and respond to different events. However, only events that are happening on the Envelblox side. One of the reasons ecosystem is so valuable is because teams are starting to become siloed and work on their own. Giving different teams the ability to automate tasks between them is crucial. But not only that, but there are thousands of security vendors out there, and being able to share event data across all of them is even more important, as no one solution will fix all of your problems. With the ecosystem, you're able to share TIE data plus event data from Blocks 1 Threat Defense to these third party solutions. An ecosystem gives you flexibility and added value to your other appliances. Now moving on to Infoblox's Threat Insight and what it offers. Threat Insight is Infoblox's ability to use behavior analytics to determine if someone is exfiltrating data from your network. This works both on-premise and in the cloud, and in a hybrid of the two for speed and security. In all, giving you the flexibility on how you want to protect yourself. Infoblox Threat Insight detects exfiltration, infiltration, and tunneling on the network and provides immediate protection against attacks, including attacks no one yet knows about, which includes day zero attacks. Now let's explain briefly what Infoblox means by the hybrid approach. Everything that we've been talking about is not just in the cloud. Not only does Infoblox give this to you in a cloud solution, but you can take all these benefits with you on Infoblox's on-premise solution. Start protecting yourself. Although there is a convenience of having everything in the cloud that I could go on and on about, nothing can beat the speed of a local machine. Not only that, but if your connection to the external network is cut for any reason, Infoblox will still be able to service you and make sure your internal network stays operational. So obviously Infoblox has on-premise solution. However, now I'll be talking about how to get DNS traffic to Blocks 1 threat defense in the cloud. The first way is with the Blocks 1 endpoint, which is an agent that you can deploy or mass deploy on all your assets. And wherever those devices go, they will be protected. So this is a good option for remote users or mobile users who travel a lot. The second option we have is with the DNS forwarding proxy, which is a VM or Docker image that you can download and configure to be used as a proxy between your assets and the Infoblox Blocks 1 threat defense. This option is good for remote offices and also for your main office if desired. Finally, is Infoblox's DNS appliance themselves. Infoblox has a DFP that runs on the Infoblox appliance, and if you already are using Infoblox DNS, then it is simple and quick to point your DNS traffic to Infoblox's Blocks 1 threat defense in the cloud. This option is best if you're already using Infoblox's appliances. Now let's move on to the live demo, where I'll be walking you through Infoblox's Blocks 1 threat defense. Now let's take a look at the CSP portal for Blocks 1 Threat Defense. Here in the dashboard, we'll see a couple of different things. Uh, here at the top, this is standard for a lot of pages where you'll be able to change the time. Uh, here on the right, you'll see the refresh time. So every couple of minutes, if you want to refresh it, or you can manually refresh it as well. For the GUI, you're able to modify these however you like, change them around, move them around, and place them as you would like. If by any chance you accidentally delete one, you can simply open up the widgets tab and drag and drop it right back to the dashboard. Now moving on to the manage tab, here you'll see a couple of different things, including the ability to create an on-prem host. Here you'll enter the name and description and then add tags however you like. These are customizable. 
and then that by default this is set for disabled however you have to enable it to start working with it once it's created you'll be able to see information about it such so as the api key and other information and then at the top you'll see you have a couple different options just removing the on-prem host and then on the right you have like stuff like the api key and other useful information that you'll need and then before moving on to networks, we also have the ability to search for specific categories of on-prem hosts. Uh, you can do that here, such as location, so you can organize it by location and find what you need. And of course, right next to that uh, database button, you also have the ability to remove or add that information on the right for the API key and such. Then really briefly moving on to external networks, here you'll be able to add a new external networks to add them to the list. And this way, they'll be able to forward the information to the CSP. Uh, this gives some useful information here. And then moving on to endpoints, you'll be able to add endpoints. These are endpoint agents that go on your devices. Uh, these are very good for remote and mobile users. Uh, and you'll have actions, of course, just like the other ones, to delete the, the endpoint and such. And then what's really important here is we have endpoint groups. Uh, this is how you're going to be able to make policies for the endpoint. So you can't make policies for the individual endpoints. You have to put them into a group first, and then you'll be able to make a policy for that endpoint group. Then moving on to bypass domains. These are domains you don't want CSP to respond to. Uh, you can add individual IPs or FQDNs, or you can add in a full CSV file and import all the bypass domains that you want right here all at the same time. And then the Threat Intelligence Data Exchange, we'll get to this in just a moment. For now, let's just look at the policies. Uh, here is how you're going to connect everything together, such as the endpoints and the different feeds and how you want to respond to them. Uh, here you obviously add in the name, and then you can add the different networks. You can add the DNS forwarders as well, uh, same way, and then also the endpoints. And then you can add custom lists as well. Uh, up here at the top, you'll see that we have the ability to create custom lists, right? And then also the feeds and how you really want to respond to each one of these, right? If you want to log it, if you don't want it to block it, however you want to look at it. And then finally, category filters. And again, we can add our customized category filters, uh, which is again at the top here. And we'll go through those. And as we add these category filters, just like the normal feeds, we're able to decide how we want to handle them. Then moving on to custom lists. Here you'll be able to add your own custom list of IPs and FQDNs. This can be from third-party threat intelligence teams that you're using, or this could be individual uh, personalized IPs and FQDNs such as Facebook, YouTube, that you want to log information for or block users from using. And then on the category filters, this is where you'll be able to add a category filter uh, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. It's like, for example, you can add drugs and customize. You just don't want people looking at alcohol sites, uh, things with drugs, all of them together. And you have a lot of different options to decide how you want to block or log information for users. And then moving on to the redirect page. Here you'll be able to uh, redirect people when they go to malicious sites to a customized message. Uh, you can create anything in HTML, CSS right into here. And then also you're able to redirect them to, let's say, your company website if they go somewhere they're not supposed to, or any other website that you would want. This would also be where you would redirect them to a gateway if you're using one. Then the on-premise DNS firewall. Here's where you're going to configure it, and there's a deployment guide. It gives you useful information here about what different types of feeds we can press down to your on-premise device, as well as what type of devices can handle what. Moving on to reports, here you'll be able to organize the information, such as the total DNS count and what's going through your network. And you'll be able to look at very specific information about the last seven days or month. Uh, if you customize the search parameters, do note that you can only search within the last month. So here I'm sitting back to January, but you can see I can only look up until February. So it's only a month in total that you're able to see at a given time. Then for security reports, you have the same kind of setup here. You're able to organize it based off threat class, policies, property type, networks, threat level. You're able to organize it and refresh it whenever you want. In this case, this is all the threats that we've seen that people have tried to go to malicious sites. You'll be able to click on these and copy the information over. You can use this in Threat Lookup or Dossier. Uh, you can also click on it and direct it directly to your Threat Lookup. 
And here's the useful information about that threat and where it came from. Then moving on to the category reports, here you'll be able to see all the information on who's going to which categories, such as drug and alcohols that we saw earlier. Obviously, you can organize all this information by hits, device, users, network, categories, and so on. And then data exfiltration. This is all the data exfiltration we saw on your network. Obviously, I don't have any data for any of these. This is just malware or command control. This is what our threat and Alexa is looking for. As some sort of exfiltration, infiltration, or botnet communication is going on, we'll be able to see it and record it here. And you'll be able to organize it and look through it and who's doing it stuff like that. Then moving on to dossier, here you'll be able to see information about those FQDNs and IPs that we say were threats. Maybe you don't know what it is or why it's a threat. You'll be able to go into here and actually see why we said it was a threat, such as the indicator information, the timeline about what happened with it, who's discovered it last, related URLs, and much, much more. You're able to click on any one of these links and actually go deeper down into it. That's just the related links and actually see exactly uh, how it's related, what information is on that link as well, and you're able to see if this FQD and our IP is really truly a threat or not. And of course, we have threat lookup, which we saw earlier, and you're able to organize the information by the day, the week, the month, quarter, so on and so forth. Then very briefly, let's look through the administrative tab. Here you'll see the licensing and the users. Uh, this you can see I have my own account but you can add new users to this with uh, admin access or user access, it's up to you. And then also we have alerts. Alerts will have to go back pretty far, but it gives you interesting alerts such as your license is about to expire or some sort of configuration was wrong when you're trying to configure the DNS firewall on premise. Then we also have the response log. Uh, these are gonna be all your DNS records and all your security events that we found. You're able to transfer them to an S3 bucket to use later. Uh, pretty useful if you want to keep all your data in-house as well. And then we also have the data connectors. This is going to be able to push all your data from your on-premise appliance to the Infoblox cloud without forwarding it. We can do some pretty useful stuff with that information you push from your on-premise appliance, such as run threat analytics or threat insight on it, and see if there's any exfiltration or infiltration, and then push that back to your on-premise device. And of course, we have the Downloads tab. This is where you're going to be able to download the endpoints, the on-premise host, which is the DFP, but then also the data connector. Now moving on to the Threat Intelligence Data Exchange, or TIE for short. Here, remember, we hit this button in our portal, and when a new tab opened up in our browser. Here in TIE, we have a few different things, including dossier, keyword search, and indicator search. We saw both of these in our CSV portal down here. And then also we have things such as different partners that you can see, all the threat intelligence IOCs that we're bringing into our portal at any given time, including the useful information that looks at uh, top domains, also the reporting, all the reports that are coming in, including governance, who can access that data. And of course, we're very API heavy. Uh, a lot of this information is going in through the API and coming out through the API. So you'll need to know how that works if you're gonna use this tied portal effectively. And you got a lot of information on how to do all that right here including quick start guides and stuff like that. Then move into your on-premise device, going to DNS response policy zone. Here you'll be able to add a new feed. Uh, here when we add it, the key word here is feed. So if we go to zones, response policy zone, and add a response policy zone feed, we will be able to use this to pull the feeds from the Blocks One Threat Defense Cloud to your on-premise device. So if we go to policies, on-premise DNS firewall configuration, here we configure it and we set it up. We'll need some information uh, that I'll show here in a second, which is such as when we add a uh, external primary, we'll need to know the address of that and also the t uh, TSIG and the key and everything else that goes with it. When you're starting to configure it, you can watch the, walk through the deployment guide and I'll actually show you that information and where to find it and how to pull it and push it into there. Moving on to Threat Analytics, this is our Threat Insight that's in the cloud. It's actually on-premise in this case. You can see the data extraction malware and command control. That's all done on-premise as well. We're able to actually use the information from your cloud and pull it down from the cloud and push it onto your on-premise devices. So if there's any remote users that we've discovered any information on, you can actually push that to your on-premise device as well. 
So a quick note about Threat Insight in the cloud is that it's a little bit more advanced than your Threat Insight on-premise. And this is because we're not constrained by hardware limitations, such as when you are on-premise, such as CPU and memory. And because of that, we're able to do a few extra cool things um, in the cloud. This is where a data connector comes in handy, because if you want to push all the information from your on-premise box up to the cloud, Threat Insight in the cloud will then analyze all that data in the cloud without those limitations. And if we find anything extra, we'll push that to your on-premise box for you. Now, give your on-premise appliance access to the cloud. You'll need to go to Grid, Grid Manager, and then edit the properties here. Inside, you'll find a tab called Active Trust Cloud Integrations. Here, you enter in the email and password for your account. You can also test that connection and then just save and close, and you'll be able to connect everything with a threat in sight. There's an additional connection you can make with your DNS servers. If you edit one of the DNS servers and go to forwarders, at the bottom there's an option to make the SaaS solution a the recursive server for your queries. This makes your on-premise box as a DFP. To get the access key, you'll need to go to the CSP portal. And on the on-premise host tab, you'll need to create a new on-premise host. And then you'll be able to see an API key. Simply copy it, and then you can paste it into the DNS forwarding option right here. Now, if you want to send all this information to third-party platforms, and you want all these integrations that we offer here at Infoblox, there's an option under the ecosystem tab, if you have it, for Active Trust Cloud uh, Client. And here you'll be able to configure it and set up for when notifications will be pulled down from the Blocks One Threat Defense Cloud and then pushed out to these third party platforms. And in essence, being able to integrate with any kind of third party platform that has an API. And of course, as long as you have that connection to the cloud, such as when you edit the properties in the grid manager, you're good to go and all the information will be pulled down to the cloud and integrated with these third party platforms. Well, that just about covers everything. Appreciate your time. If you have any other questions or concerns, you can find me or any of the other experts here at Infoblox on the community website at community.infoblox.com. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.